And there are other cases where Roberts was accused of faux judicial restraint, uh, cleverly rewriting or chipping away at precedents without formally overturning them. Remember that remarkable exchange between Justice Breyer and Chief Justice Roberts and the parents involved affirmative action case where Breyer charged that Roberts had uh, unsettled uh, uh, understanding of precedent dating back to the Swan case, that government may voluntarily adopt race-conscious measures to improve, race, to improve racial balance, even when it's not constitutionally obliged to do so. Uh, Breyer said that no cases from Adiron to Grutter to Gratz had previously adopted Roberts' claim that all racial classifications have to be treated the same, whether they seek to exclude or include. So why should you care about this faux judicial restraint charge? Maybe these are just the dissenters who are grumbling, sour grapes. You should care, because the whole point of upholding precedent is what Michael Gerhardt calls the gold, golden rule. Justices have to treat others' precedent as they want their own to be treated, or else risk being treated with the same disdain they show others once they're out of power. And the model for a golden rule type justice is a good judicial conservative, Justice Harlan, the second Justice Harlan on the Warren Court, who was admired by Democrats and Republicans alike for his, tra like for his transparency and honesty. He defended precedents he thought the majority was distorting, and he followed precedents with which he disagreed without mischaracterizing them. This brings me to the case that I uh, want to talk about now, which is the Citizens United case. And uh, Justice Markham talked about the uh, Warren Court vision of justice embracing a kind of disembodied form of justice that basically left uh, justices untethered. They were allowed to pursue their own visions of justice untethered from text, history, precedent, and tradition. What I want to say is that both the principal opinion by Justice Kennedy and the concurrence by Justice Roberts suggest the resurrection of Earl Warren. This is conservative uh, Warrenism or maybe not so much conservative, because there are very good arguments for striking down the McCain-Feingold law. Many of them are embraced by civil libertarian liberals as well as libertarian conservatives. You can be a good defender of the First Amendment and have problems with McCain-Feingold. What you can't be is, an original, is a restrained originalist or someone who's devoted to precedent or tradition or all the other things that judicial conservatives claim they're devoted to. It's a very abstract notion of the First Amendment untethered to these uh, historical understandings. So I won't run through uh, each of them. There's a vigorous debate about original understanding in Citizens United between Justice uh, Scalia, who says the framers didn't distinguish between corporations and other speakers, and Justice Stevens, who said a central concern of the framers, and not to mention the Reconstruction Republicans, was a concern about monopoly power and corporate corruption. Uh, there's no deference to Congress or states or settled tradition dating back to 1907. But most important for our purposes, there's no deference to precedent. And again, we have that sense of faux judicial restraint that leads the opponents to claim that they're being played for dupes. The precedents are being not only overturned, as they are in this case, for this case overturned not only the Austin case and McConnell versus Right to Life, but also uh, uh, the Beaumont case, Massachusetts Citizens for Life, California Medical Association, a whole swath of precedents that led Stevens to say, the court today rejects a century of history when it treats the distinction uh, as an invidious novelty born of the Austin case. Uh, relying on individual dissenting opinions, the majority blazes through our precedents overruling this whole series of cases. Stevens charges the majority of mischaracterizing the Buckley case and saying it was only concerned with quid pro quo political corruption, whereas in fact the concern was much broader. He says the majority mischaracterized the Bilotti case and saying corporate speech had been protected the same in different contexts, even though Bilotti acknowledged a greater danger of undue influence in corporate expenditures on general elections than on referenda. So this is anti-Harlanism. It's not a characterization of precedents that opponents can accept as honest, transparent, and fair, an amalgamation of resuscitated dissents. Stevens says the only relevant thing that changed since Austin and McConnell is the composition of the court. OK, so why should, why should you care? Why should, uh, you know, you, many of you may like the result in McConnell. Uh, it's plausible. It's defensible. The justices aren't being corrupt or voting their financial interests. Why, why be bothered? This is the judge's question. I think the reason we should care is the same reason that Roberts uh, identified when he complained to me that it was bad for the court in a polarized time for people to read in the newspapers that decisions were being decided on the basis of five to four uh, decisions along predictable major uh, ideological lines that undermines confidence in impartial justice in a polarized age. Now, it's true that the public follows the bottom lines of decisions, not the reasons, as just as Stevens acknowledged in the Citizens United case. But um, the public still needs to feel like judges are not on an ideological crusade using clever chess moves to get uh, their preferred results by any means necessary. And I have to say that uh, in some sense, the Warren Court 
uh, whose uh, opinions I've been uh, critical of in the past, and I've been very sympathetic to the Federalist Society's energetic critique of flea floating Warrenism, but at least the Warren Court was more transparent and had the courage of its convictions. It was unafraid to overturn precedents openly, map Miranda, rather than twisting, chipping away at them, mischaracterizing them, them in this faux judicial restraint way, uh, and led opponents to feel that they'd been played for dupes. Uh, if you want an icon of this sort of fair-minded restraint, we could think not only of uh, John Harlan, but also of uh, Byron White, that old, uh, uh, the Kennedy appointee, he nearly always deferred to Congress and the states. He dissented in Roe v. Wade, but after he lost, he was enough of a sportsman to embrace the precedents he'd once criticized and apply them in future cases. There's a real danger that the public will think that the uh, law is all politics. Uh, it uh, should be of concern. I think that 80% of the public is opposed to the Citizens United decision, not because of the reasoning, obviously, they're not following this faux judicial restraint stuff, but because of fear of the curse of bigness and of corporate corruption in American democracy is the central political issue in our day. It does seem to me, though, that when the dissenting justices charge opponents with being less than candid in their reading of precedents, it increases the cynicism about what, ju what judges are supposed to do in a polarized age. I mean, think of how you feel when you read Roe v. Wade in class. And I don't know, there's a range of views jurisprudentially and politically. But those of you who feel, regardless of what you think about abortion, that Roe is not a principled uh, decision, you feel like your uh, scruples have been uh, read out of the respectable debate. You've been played for dupes when they're just dismissed again and again. Uh, people on the other side will feel the same thing when they read a decision like Citizens United that they feel just is not playing fair in characterizing precedents. So this kind of uh, cynicism, this faux judicial restraint, is just what John Roberts pledged to avoid when he first came into office. And as uh, someone who continues to admire the Chief Justice, I hope he will return to his original vision of collegiality and minimalism and abandon this dangerous path of faux judicial restraint. Thank you so much.